by, uh, sorry, from Astralis, have bought Vitality down to like 50 points of health on a player before they've even seen anyone. Device tries to get thrown up in that boost there. It does at least let Masuta get the trade, but Device, another multi-kill round. At the very least, he's on to two. Can he manage any more? There's another Device. Where's this been? Oh, and number okay. four. Go on, get it all. Take a all device down. Trying to plant this ball, but they don't let him. They don't yeah. let him get the plant. They rush him down, but they haven't found the kill. And onto device by the truck he's being pressured from so many sides still able to find the frag onto dead jw as the bomb looking to get down but golden wants another frag will find it onto zipex and it's all onto device first no scope and the second device now buster leaving a trend in a one versus four and ladies and gentlemen All right, we're back. Let's take a look at Device on Train against Navi and Simple. Astralis, definitely the undisputed number one team and maybe the best team of CS of all time. And honestly, I would agree with that, even better than the NIP 87-0 run. The competition nowadays is much harder. Teams are working like well-oiled machines. They're, they're much stronger than they used to be. I think Astralis takes that number one spot. This first round, you can see they actually had no intention of actually taking Ivy here. You can see the bomb is still left towards spawn. They just wanted to put a lot of pressure on. Maybe take a little bit of map control, see if they could push the CTs away from that Ivy hallway. And then just kind of come back and maybe set up a default after that. But I wanted to say Astralis is what every other team is measured against. They are consistently the best, and it's not because of obscene star power it's because of obscene consistency teamwork and a relentless dedication to the system that they play in they play a very team oriented game and i think that is what gives them their consistency they're not relying as much on raw aim if like a device their star player if he doesn't show up one game they're not an automatic loss like vitality with zaiwu they don't rely on godly aim just to win games. They're going to get there with their teamwork and their strategic decisions. And that's always going to be a more consistent way to win games rather than relying on star power. And that shows in the results that Astralis have had in the last three years. And I really did not have to go far in this demo to get a good example of them and their commitment to their system and their strategy. Here's a round device full on runs through this Molotov as a commitment to take the site and find out where the defender is exactly that's going to help the guys behind you trade he knows he's 100 percent going to die when he goes through here but his teammates behind him smoke the molotov they trade out the ct and they push forward in the site to make their pistols relevant they go on to get some kills they get some guns and the next round they barely have to buy anything and device gets to start the round with simple's op that he had last round Device works mid most of this demo actually with the AWP and he catches Boomish in, the, in a boost spot. I really didn't like that spot from Boomish. Yeah, he had a Deagle, so, you know, a long range weapon and a reasonable fight for him to take there, but save the, like the premium spots for when you have guns. Ideally put an AWPer up there, you're definitely going to get a kill. Don't, don't condition your enemy to look at the premium spots when you just have a Deagle. You're probably not going to get a kill from there. Check out how many nades they commit to this fake. They got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nades, and then they all go inner. And they have two guys hitting ladder, so it looks like an outside split. And if those guys get a kill, you know, you can always pivot and just send everyone out ladder if you're able to get control of that. It's the type of strat where you can just rely on your mid round calling. And if you get the kills outside, hey, take outside. If not, you can fall back. You've done a good fake on the outside. You could probably hit inner after that. So um, after the nades, it's all up to the mid round calling and they go from there. Stralis went on to lose that round, but it was still a, a cool strat, you know. So moving right along here, 4-2 for Navi and Device, he's not super flashy. Like these shots, like the shot on simple there was not that fast or crazy or a nice flick or anything like that. That was a nice eagle shot, but he's a very, very accurate opper. He's like the opposite of Kenny S. He does not flick that fast, but he'll hit like 95% of his op shots. And he is Mr. Consistency in my opinion. 
The Vice gets a fantastic shot on Simple here, with Simple looking right at him. And you can see, this is a good, like, this is why Train is called, like, the aim map of all the competitive maps, because there's just straight up long distance duels sometimes that you have to take. And you can't smoke and flash people out of all the spots. Eventually, you're going to need to take a heads up fight. And in this particular round, Device wins it. Well, not this fight, but he won the one against Simple. No matter how good your teamwork is, eventually you're going to need to take a gunfight against Simple. And Simple wins this one with Device looking right at him even. Um, it was actually a good spot. Like, that's a cool spot from Simple because it's very hard to trade out of there. You can see how quickly he can get out of there just by strafing behind the door. Dupree was right there. He was ready to trade in case Device died, but Simple was in the position where it just made that too difficult to actually do. Device and Astralis know it's an eco round here. That's why he's taking such a wide peek against the pistols. And this round is, is probably just like 90% of the other rounds that everybody else has on train. It's very default heavy. You're going to spread out, have a guy at Ivy, have a guy mid or two guys mid, maybe two guys ladder and one guy watching enter. It's very default driven and can have quick rotates for the T's and the CT's using the ladder and Z connector. So the strategy and mid round calling on train, I would say is significant i hate those shots to that little crack there i'd say the mid-round calling on train is more significant than say dust 2 like dust 2 everybody has such a thorough understanding of it you can make a call right off the bat and kind of stick with it train is very mid-round heavy and you can quickly change your mind between bomb sites even with the eco round from navi here i wanted to show how device clears mid it's important to be at mid with a teammate if you're opping you really don't want to be there alone he's also not standing and looking at the same place for very long he's moving very quickly from the two just so somebody can't walk up to the side of one of the trains or walk up between trains to get close to him so he's scoping and checking out all these different angles but he's not committing to one angle for too long and it is really a talent especially if you're doing this against other offers or against rifles to be able to clear mid and keep an eye on mid without giving too much away. And I just wanted to point out how much device is moving around. Even though he's opping, he's constantly moving back and forth, never holding one angle for more than, you know, half a second, just to keep the CTs spaced away from him and not able to walk up closely on him. Unfortunately for him, his teammates kind of get grinded into dust from the Deagles on Navi, and he's left into this 1v3 with no chance positionally on train it's just impossible to be looking at the top of trains the bottom of trains eventually you're going to get caught off guard and he does last round of the half and astralis is going to split outside one coming out ladder and four coming out main and four on main is a little bit crowded i'm surprised they had no one ivy um, but i guess this is just what they decided to do with the nades that they had and i like the way that device goes in you can see he is not super aggressively entering the op he's taking a much more slow and deliberate fight just letting his teammates get contact and then he'll pick them off as he sees them and that last flick those flicks to the left were always my weakest point and they are for most right-handed people next time you're dming just just test yourself see if you like flicking to the right or the left more and i bet you you're gonna find yourself uh, much more accurate flicking to the right rather than the left if you're right-handed. Pistol round second half and device is holding a very standard long range angle. But that's not actually what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the mini map. Keep an eye on his teammate Glaive is number seven there. And he's gonna have four T's rush at him, all run by him. I assume he's hiding in the smoke. And they all run past him without him dying or even him getting a kill. So he's just camping there kind of in Ivy. Device is gonna come up the stairs to start taking back the bomb site. I thought for sure Glaive was going to get a kill there from Ivy. Maybe they knew he was there. I got to I gotta check that out in the demo, actually. Device comes up on the bomb site, and it looks like he has a great angle, but Simple shows why he's absolutely a nightmare to play against. All right, let's see what Glaive does here. He sees the smokes coming in, so he counter smokes it. It seems like this guy has plays with smoke grenades every game. Like, if Stewie is the smoke criminal, what does that make this guy? Somehow he gets out of this fucking situation alive. Okay, so he's back in Ivy, and the smoke starts to fade. He's only got seven bullets. Simple is reloading, and he absolutely misses every shot. All right, that's a low light worth showing again here. As Simple just finishes up his reload, he, he is not even close with a lot of those shots, too. Jesus. Well, it happens to the best of them, and, uh, and it happens to Glaive, too, I guess. 
Anyways, this next round, I wanted to show off the buy that they do here. If you look at what Astralis did, they have, they recognize that having the Augs in the second round is dangerous if they lose them. So what they did was Dupree bought the Aug for someone else. So that person could buy full head armor. And then Dupree was dropped the weaker gun and just goes no head armor because they're not worried. If Dupree dies, you know, because he had no head armor, no big deal. He just has a SMG. But if one of the Augs dies because they had no head armor, that's a problem. So they make sure both of the Aug guys have full armor. And, uh... I, had, I don't remember seeing that, that depth of buying strategy from many other teams. Later on in the round here, Device gets in a scout fight against a Deagle, and he recognizes that Flamey has a Deagle there, so as soon as he kills him, he wants to go grab that right away. Ever thrifty, Mr. Device doesn't want to buy the Deagle. If he, if he had an op in that situation, I guarantee you he would not run in to try and grab that gun. Unless he had full intel on where the other T was, and by the way he's walking, he doesn't have full intel actually. But if he had an op, he wouldn't risk going in there just to get a deagle on the off chance that he gets peeked while he's walking there uh, by the next terrorist, and then he loses his op. So since he just had a scout, he, he's not he's weighing that. It's not a big deal if he dies, so he goes and grabs the deagle to save a little bit of money. All right, you guys are going to love this. Check out these spams through the wall by Device and his teammates on. Uh, they do all this damage to Boomich and Flamey. Device hasn't hit them yet until right there. There we go, it gets a, gets a nice connection on Flamey. And they are ridiculously low in health and they haven't even seen anyone yet. All they've done is throw some nades from above the ladder room. All right, Device brings the op to upper here. And I just want you to take note of how he gets peaked here. He's gonna hold a tight angle, like very close to the wall. And he just gets sliver peaked and probably pre-fired and they end up headshotting him through the wall. So just keep that shot in mind as I go through the rest of this demo. I'm going to bring it up later. The rest of this round plays out very old school Navi-like where they just kind of sit in one spot for the entire round timer. Hoping that everybody else goes to sleep and then with 10 seconds left they explode onto a bomb site. They actually did outweight Astralis though. Astralis had a guy at the top of the ladder that could have cut them off from going in her, but they waited him out and he rotated off that position for some reason. The problem is you're going to get annihilated by grenades this late in the round. They know you have to commit to the bomb site, and it's very easy to grenade the, the default plant. And then Device sits back with the op, cuts off the lanes in the bomb site, switches to the AK to finish the retake. So everything was, was looking great until he forgot to check his corners. All right, remember how I told you to keep that in mind, how he was peaked last round? Check this out. He holds almost the exact same angle here. He's going to widen his angle a little bit in a second tier. And he's going to get peaked by an AK from Boomich, but Boomich Ferrari peaks it. He swings hella wide. And I think Device was expecting a shoulder peak there. And then when he saw that wide peak, he just... Couldn't adjust his crosshair in time and he went down. If he would have expected the wide peak, he would have had a kill there. But he was conditioned to the shoulder peak or the jiggle peak from the round before. This round shows a really good retake from Astralis. Granted, B at on train is not the hardest to retake. But this is a textbook way to do it. Device is planted at the back of the site here, cutting off the lanes. And you're going to see his three teammates just push out in front of him in unison. And he'll stay to the back and just check the lanes back and forth, making sure that the terrorists can't move and can't reposition just from him cutting the lanes. He can get so much done just by staying at the back of the site with the op here. His teammates can go throw nades and, and check different angles or whatever. But Device, all he has to do is stay at the back with his op and cover his teammates as they move through the site. I'm actually going to show it again, just because it was such a nice retake. I feel like I'm kind of talking about the same thing in my three demo <laughs> reviews so far with the Zaiwu one and the simple one, but they're all oppers, which makes sense because, like, I wanted to cover the top HLTV players, and the best player on your team is usually going to be an opper. They're the ones that get the most money invested in them. They're the ones that have the biggest impact. So it makes sense that the top three on HLTV are all oppers. Device and Simple both hit each other and neither of them die, just winged. I don't know how it's even possible to hit someone with an op and do 99 damage. Device has 1 HP for the rest of this round. I thought he'd position himself to be like in a spot where it's hard to get grenaded, but he goes onto the bomb train, which seems like a pretty 
common spot to get grenaded from. You see he has a 50-50. Like, check out the mini-map here. He's got guys coming to his left and a guy on his right. And he just uh, doesn't hit the 50-50 and look the right direction on which angle he's getting peeked from. I was really praying to the Lord of Lightning here that he'd get a Zeus kill. But <laughs> Electronic never commits to it. Hey, that's ironic. Zeus kill on Electronic. That would have been funny. He hears him running away. Takes out the USP. Electronic actually had his knife out. So he's lucky to, to get that kill. But he does. Alright, I wanted to show another B defense. And you can see Device is the B player. But he's going to stay towards the back of the bomb site again. Big surprise. And that really is the right way to defend. But he's not... Just because they're attacking B, he's not trying to stop them from planting. He's trying to stop them from getting good positions in the bomb site, And he succeeds at that just by staying alive and cutting off angles. And cutting off the laneways between the trains. This type of play is going to require a lot of coordination team-wise. Just to pull off. You can see he's going to stay at the back again. His teammates will push, but the problem is that even though they're getting these kills and they're getting towards the front of the bomb, the time has ticked off the bomb. A lot of time has ticked off the bomb. And despite them being right on top of the bomb, one hitch in the plan, like their diffuser getting picked off right there, means that they lose the round, even though they have two guys left alive. So you're really playing with fire when you let the round timer get that low, but it's still the right way to play, especially on that bomb site on train. It just didn't work out this time for them. All right, last round of the game, we made it. If you look at the mini map, you can see that this is already a problem for Navi. They've got a four stack, Astralis has a four stack outside. Even though they have garbage guns, they've got their AWP out here and they've got their AUG on the outside bomb site. So that plus the two USP players, it's, it's gonna be a problem for Navi to take this site. And Device is able to stay in this angle actually because of a smoke that Navi threw. They throw that smoke at the front of the bomb train to block off uh, Z Connector. So he can't be seen from ladder or anything. So he's really not overexposed. Device and Magisk actually do all the work that round. They get all five kills with their guns. So the four man stack outside really worked out. I hope you enjoyed the demo review. I really think uh, Device has a unique playstyle compared to Zywoo and Simple for sure. They're actually all three are pretty distinct and play their own game. Device being definitely the most passive and maybe cerebral is the best way to describe them. Uh, if you have any recommendations or suggestions on who to cover next, leave a comment down below and hit that like button, dislike button, whatever you want to do. And I'll see you guys next time, alright? Peace.